everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we've got something here that looks just like a Nintendo 3DS, but it isn't. This is actually an Android device uh, running with a Rockchip 3288 processor. This is going to be of interest to uh, retro gamers out there. It's called the GPD XD. It's running with Android. It's got uh, Android 4.4, so the prior version of Android is running on it. Uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage. So it's pretty much a mid-level uh, Android device. You'll see on some of the benchmarks that we're going to be showing you in a few minutes. We're running the 3D Mark test right now that it performs pretty much in the middle of the Android scale, not quite up to what you might see with one of the flagship smartphones, but uh, good enough and I think it'll run most of the Android game library pretty well but uh, I'm interested in it for uh, its emulation capabilities. Uh, I got this for $140 as you see it. A really nice display on here actually. IPS at uh, 1280 by uh, 768 so really sharp looking display. Very nice to look at from most angles which I, I thought was really nice to see on a device at this price point. Uh, decent controls too. You got two analog thumbsticks here that actually do feel very nice. Maybe not as good as the Nintendo but close to it. Uh, you also have a deep pad here that's very nice and stiff and responsive along with some decent buttons here too. Uh, you have some shoulder buttons on the back also. So you pretty much have the buttons you need to play just about any uh, arcade game or Android game out there. You got your select and start buttons here. Everything can be configured properly. What was nice is that uh, as I was jumping into different emulators, this really came uh, pre-configured. So I didn't have to really go in and map many controls. Things just seemed to work right off the bat. I think they installed some software to give it some uh, some compatibility with those things. So a uh, really nice experience there. Again, we got two gigs of RAM in here, 16 gigabytes of storage, and uh, we also have an SD card. Mine came with an SD card when I bought it. I don't know if all of them will, so you may or may not get one, but they uh, threw a loose uh, uh, SD card in the box with mine, 16 gig card there. Uh, USB is over here. This is for charging, but you can also plug in an OTG device like a USB uh, adapter so you could plug in a secondary controller that does not have Bluetooth though. So if you do plan on using its HDMI output here to plug it into a television, uh, you're going to have to also use the uh, OTG there to plug in a controller via USB because there is no Bluetooth. There is Wi-Fi, of course, for connecting to the Google Play Store and everything else. Uh, and you have a headphone jack there too. So a uh, pretty nice system though overall. Nice design. The battery life isn't bad on it either. I, I'm going to say probably between five to eight hours of battery life depending on what you're doing with it. So if you're running Nintendo Nintendo games from back in the day, that's going to be fine. If you're doing things like, you know, the PSPP emulator, which is going to push the hardware much, uh, much more strongly, uh, that will probably run closer to five hours. So again, very dependent on uh, exactly what it is you are running on the device when you are using it. So we're going to step through uh, some of the higher end emulators in this review. We know that the 8 and the 16-bit stuff is going to work fine. I did run it before. I did like the controls. They did feel pretty nice. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a bad experience at all, but we know a $50 tablet can run uh, the Sega Genesis, this one can too. We're going to look at though is Dreamcast, uh, some heavy duty arcade games like Street Fighter Alpha uh, 3, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, and we're also going to be taking a look at uh, the PSPP emulator to kind of see where the limits are of this device. So let's get to it and see what we can run on here. All right, so we're running the Dreamcast emulator called Recast, or somebody said it was called Raycast the other day. Uh, whatever they call it, this is it running here on the device. You can get that emulator for free on the Google Play Store. Uh, so we're seeing frame rates of about 38 frames per second right here as we're running through the attract screen. So uh, not again, not up to par with maybe a, a high-end phone might be, but uh, certainly playable. It doesn't look bad here at all. What I am going to do, though, is plug in my external display here and just see if that has any impact on performance. So there we go. We've got... Uh, the screen running now on both. I'll switch over to our uh, dual display here. We're seeing pretty much the same frame rate. We'll wait for the uh, track screen to come back up here again and see if that has any impact. But again, we're seeing about that same 38 frames per second or so uh, that we saw before. So really no impact for uh, connecting your external display to the device. We might jump back and forth between that uh, in a little bit. So I'm going to get out of here now, go back home, and we'll go take a look at the Nintendo 64 emulator called uh, MooPen 64 Plus, and we'll just resume our game of uh, Morio here. I'm going to turn the volume down too. So uh, there we go. We've got uh, Morio running. This seems to run pretty nicely. My only complaint with it is that the sound is a little scratchy. So I have to do some adjustments to uh, some of the settings on there. But as you can see here, uh, it does seem to be running uh, pretty nicely uh, in emulation on the device here. So it works okay with the Dreamcast as well as the Nintendo 64. Two uh, mid to late 90s consoles that tend to push some of the lower end hardware a little bit. 
Uh, for 140 bucks, you'll have a pretty nice little console that can do that. Uh, now we're going to take a look at is MAME. This is running uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3. We'll see if I can survive long enough here to get a feel for how this runs. So a uh, decent frame rate. I'm, I'm not seeing any slowdown at all. Uh, the sound is also pretty good here. I'll turn up the volume a little bit so you can listen to this as we're uh, getting pummeled by uh, this dude here. So let's wait for the uh, second round to start here. I got to continue. Let me put another coin in here. Uh, and get uh, the, the show back on the road here so you can get a feel for uh, how this is running as we're playing. So pretty decent arcade experience also. And I think having these uh, analog sticks on here really helps. So uh, that's a nice feature too. And especially in a fighting game like this because you do want to uh, do some of those fireballs and stuff. I, I've never been good at these games at all and I, I really need to learn how to play them. Maybe I'll, I'll take some time to do that. But here you go, you can see it's a pretty, uh, you know, pretty uh, hardcore arcade game here. Uh, running really nicely. This is probably among the more higher-end games that you might run on uh, Android hardware, and it seems to be keeping up with it quite well. So pretty, uh, pretty good experience there overall. I should also mention too. Let me pause the game real quick here. Uh, that there is on the uh, back of the device some really nice. Uh, little uh, uh, shoulder buttons that have uh, mechanical switches on them. So they do click and they really sound uh, very, very nice when you, when you touch them, but they're also very, very responsive too. So where things start to slow down is when we're doing some of the PSP emulation. So we're running uh, the PSP emulator with, I think this is a God of War. And you can see it's, it's somewhat playable, but uh, very, very slow, especially with all this activity on the screen here. I've been trying to adjust some settings down a little bit to maybe get it a little bit faster. And some of you who are uh, more experienced with this emulator might have some suggestions for me, but uh, really is not the best experience when you start working your way into more modern hardware. So I think where we saw the uh, the limit is, is probably at the Nintendo 64. The, the uh, Sony PlayStation does run pretty well on here, uh, as do a lot of other uh, consoles from the, you know, the earlier stages of gaming here. You know, again, the mid-90s back uh, should be okay. But where you kind of hit the limit is on the PSP and some other things that are a lot more demanding, both on the processor, but also on the graphics hardware. So those are the you know, things to kind of keep in mind throughout there. So on the 3D Mark, benchmark test, we got a pretty respectable score actually, 11,406. Now the frame rates on the graphics tests are about half of what they might be on a flagship smartphone, but those are $400 devices. This is a uh, $140 device. Uh, what was interesting though is the physics score was as high as it was, 45 frames per second uh, on the physics score, which is much more processor intensive. So this does have a pretty fast processor, uh, which bests or is at least as good as the flagship phones. It's the, the graphics, the GPU side uh, that isn't as fast. But uh, what's nice is that as far as the Android Play Store is concerned, the kind of games you might buy on there here like uh, uh, Madden Football, Ball are all going to run just fine because again they are targeting a lot of lower end devices on the uh, on the uh, Google Play Store as you can see. So games like this really run quite nicely off the Play Store. Things you might buy that are native Android games will work just great. And, you know a lot of the higher end stuff that might be designed for the Nvidia Shield and some of the other higher end devices won't be as as nice as this would be. But uh, certainly a lot of the games that you'll find on the Android Store that are you know aimed at the casual environment should work pretty well. So that is the GPD XD, and I have to say I'm very impressed with this device. I wasn't expecting much. I had looked at a GPD device that was similar to this a couple of years ago. I wasn't really that impressed with it. It didn't feel all that polished or finished. Uh, this one really is quite nice. It's got a really nice display. That's the first thing I noticed when I took it out of the box. It's hard to not notice it, of course, but uh, the quality of the display is really nice. You know, that IPS display, the right resolution for the size. So you don't really see any pixels. The screen is very sharp looking. Uh, the controls feel very nice too. Very solid controls, very responsive controls controls uh, and much better than I expected, especially from uh, what I looked at prior with it. So it does look and feel like a 3DS, so they did borrow some uh, innovation from Nintendo here, but uh, I think this does work well for what you've got here. And what's nice is that the controls are integrated, uh, and when you're done with it, you just fold it shut, and your screen is sort of protected. I mean, stuff could get in between there, so you might want to get a pouch or something, but uh, you can throw it in a bag and not worry about the screen getting squished while you're uh, moving around with it. So pretty nice overall, $140. I bought mine at uh, AliExpress. Uh, but there's also some available at geekbuying.com. I'm going to put an affiliate link down below, lon.tv slash gpd. So if you're interested in this and you buy it from Geek Buying, a portion of that will help the channel. Uh, this is not being paid for by Geek Buying, but I'm going to start at the end of my videos just plugging uh, my affiliate links a little bit more because those really do help the channel's growth. And I'm always looking to uh, keep the channel moving. So if you uh, are interested in buying one of these, that's a great way to do it. And you'll help the channel too. So this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.